Why do they call it that gets my goat? I mean, it's just stupid. So, finding Dory. Yeah. This is Rich Outfield. And with me, that my silent partner is uh, Big Anklevich. Hi, I'm silent. And this is That Gets My Goat. I'm obnoxious. Pixar edition. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another round of uh, summer movie fun with Rich and Big. Last time we were here, I had forced Rich to go and see the X-Men movie, which he didn't want to see. And he was probably right. It wasn't really that good. I think we were both disappointed. Now this time around, we are going to see a uh, Pixar film. The newest Pixar sequel. Because Pixar doesn't make films anymore, they just make sequels. And this is the newest Pixar sequel called Finding Dory. So had our roles reversed? Did I drag you to see Finding Dory? Pretty much. I don't think there's any way I would have seen it otherwise. I would have boycotted. But I was the only one, because Finding Dory made $130 million in its opening weekend. It was, what, the largest animated opening ever? Yep. Uh, Previous record holder was Shrek the Third. Oh. (laughs) Sorry, that doesn't mean anything. Most of my animosity towards Shrek has gone away, except for when it happens to be on television. Which is all the time. But yeah, I, I I wanted to see it. I looked forward to it. I, you told me it got a 93 on Rotten Tomatoes. And I was like, okay, we'll go see that. That sounds good. Today has a 94. Yeah, it's gone up even, which I don't know if that's a normal thing. Somebody changed their tune or something. They're like, oh, you know what? When I said before about it being bad, and nah, I changed my mind. Everybody else said it was good, and I'm going with the peer pressure. Maybe the guy who had rated it poorly before, so it was at 93, he said, you know what? I'm, I'm out of the business. I'm no longer a film critic. You're going to have to get somebody else. And so they removed his rating and put in a different one. Okay. Or maybe they just got another review that kind of bumped it up. I was reminded, though, of how you and I saw Frozen way late in its run. Not in its run, but we didn't see Frozen opening weekend or the week after that or the week after that. By the time we saw it, there was this huge phenomenon that everybody knew and everybody was quoting. I, I, you know, I was just like, okay, I defy you to impress me, Frozen. It's like, I'm not like all these other people who've seen it eight times. And uh, Frozen sort of won me over. But I do remember going into it with my hands and fists. I was like, I'm not going to like this. You had your dukes up. And I I wonder if you were that way. I certainly was during the little Sandpiper teaser at the beginning. Because, oh, sorry, the spoiler alert. There were so many terrible trailers before Finding Dory. (laughs) Is that a spoiler alert? Oh, it was (laughs) awful. Dude, I know that I'm this curmudgeonly old bastard, you know, who's going to put up a bunch of balloons to make his house go away. But, it, I, oh, my gosh, they just sucked. And yeah. so by the time we got to the Pixar short, I was just like, okay, F you guys and F all young people anywhere. <laughs> the worst was hearing the people behind us as each of those crappy, crappy trailers came to an end with their crappy joke, their last Ice Age 7 or whatever number we're on comes to an end and has a dumb joke at the end. And somebody up there at the top of the theater goes, <laughs> and laughs out loud at just the worst. Stupid Pratt. I mean, we had a freaking trailer for that movie where Kevin Spacey gets turned into a cat. <laughs> that was the worst. The cat was doing pull-ups? <laughs> Because a person does that. It See? It was the worst thing ever. Like, why? Uh... I don't know. I thought that was Oscar worthy compared to the Ice Age trailer, but. Uh... Well, yeah. Anyhow, yeah, just there was not a single trailer that impressed me or moved me or got me excited. And, you know, I'm sure that that Disney animated film that comes out at the end of the year will be fine, but oh, it's trailer blue, dude. Sure, it was put together by the same people that did the Frozen trailer <laughs> and, and designed the poster where there are two naked people in a pile of hair. <laughs> uh, it just sucked. 
And so there's this little sandpiper thing. And there's a cutesy little baby fluffy baby that's afraid of the water and he's afraid and he doesn't want to do it because he's afraid and would feed me, feed me. I almost drowned and said, please feed it. I was like, F you and F all children. And then about halfway through that thing, I was like, oh, I guess children serve a purpose. I, <laughs> uh, they're, they're not all disposable, I guess. And by the end, I was just like, okay, that was and then some woman had to ruin it three rows back, going, ah! I was like, what, you've never seen Luxo Jr. bounce on the Pixar eye before? What the hell? <laughs> and then Finding Dory began. I liked Piper. It was funny because it comes on, you know, it fades up. And uh, I turned to you and said, oh, they made a, a live action short this time around because it looks so freaking real. It's just too much. I'm sorry. They got to. They got to stop. What? But, uh, they got to stop improving. They need to like try and suck. I agree, but we also saw the trailer for Storks, and the birds in that looked like they could have been created 25 years ago. And uh, and so yeah, the the movie's called Storks. Yeah, I think so. Oh, what a lame title. Might that was the the best well trailer just... we saw, by the way. We might as well just make a movie called Minions while they're at it. Jeez. Oh, there was one where they showed the Minion at the end of the trailer. It's like, oh. hey, don't forget, guys, the people who made Minions are somewhat peripherally connected to this. And I wanted to shoot the Minion, too. He was just like... <laughs> he was saying Illumination, I think. Oh, and he But he going, said it like nine different badly. He was going movies. off, and I was just like, oh... Where is my cleat so I might punt this thing? Uh, and then Finding Dory began. But, I, okay, earlier you said that Pixar only does sequels, which is a lie. But since, not much since of Since there one. was Good Dinosaur, and before that there was this Inside Out movie that people loved. Yeah, and what is the present. next not sequel planned? I have no idea. I, uh -huh. I but you I, know what the next sequel plan is. I don't. I, I don't. I don't really either. But I think it's like Incredibles and <laughs> I think Wally Two. You and I'll be in our sixties when Incredibles comes out. And I think they're making Bugs Life Two and uh, <laughs> Braver. Yeah, Braver. I think it's going to be Braved. So that's why you didn't want to see it. Was because it was a sequel, or did you did the too. the uh, ad campaign not do it for you, or the idea that oh, wait, here's something too. Before we went into the movie. We saw the poster, and Dory was super prominent on the poster. And then Nemo and Marlin, little tiny little peripheral characters. And I thought, oh, well, that's that's strange. I, uh, weird. Why why would they be so small? And you're like, did you not know what this movie is about? Or what this it's is, called? This is Dory's movie. <laughs> and you reminded me, you know, that we had a Cars sequel where the sidekick character became the main character. And what was the other one? Monsters right? Incorporated 2. Where, yeah, I, where Mod Randall was the Mod main Randall. character. I, I, I don't know. I, again, I disagree with you on Monsters Inc. But, uh, where Mr. Waternews becomes the main exactly. character. Exactly. <laughs> yes. It's, where the, I want you yeah. pay for what. But, but you Smith, know what? If the people who made Minions yes. made Monsters Inc., would it be a Ross? there would be a trio of, yeah. I want your paperwork, part two. Yeah, it would be all about Roz's adventures as part of the, uh, what are they called? The 21... Jump Street, yes. 16, 21, 19. It's there. Oh, you ate one too, yes. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> I didn't know that this the, the, the roles have reversed, but it, it, it is. It was Ellen DeGeneres in... Finding Dory, so I was surprised by that, and I wondered: are, do, were any of those reasons why you didn't want to see it, or you just you you're soured on the whole sequel? I mean, first off, this movie aside, Finding Nemo didn't need a sequel. Agreed. It it's not one of the you know the, some movies beg for a sequel. Some movies have a sequel, but they didn't really beg for it. But it, you know, it's fine. Other movies, oh, the sequel is so unwanted and so unnecessary and, and often unbelievably poorly done and basically a remake of the first movie with, you know, one slight twist in it. The Little Mermaid 2, Back to the Sea. <laughs> right. That is a good example. You see, Ariel and Eric have a child and she's raised on land. 
And she looks out in the ocean and says, what would I give to swim out that far? <laughs> what would I pay to go glug glug or me? And you're just like, really? She wants, she longs to be in the water. Well, just take scuba lessons or something then. <laughs> anyway, spoiler alert, she super glues her legs together. And yeah, she, and she ends up in a mental hospital. <laughs> It's it's actually a pretty sad, tragic sequel. It, it, that was one of those that really, you know, folks didn't respond to as well because of the sad ending. But, you know, it, it was my only chance that I got to write a screenplay. So, you know, I jumped at it. Unfortunately, uh, I was never asked back. She was eaten by a manatee at the <laughs> end, folks. <laughs> and manatees generally don't eat things. That was why it was it was supposed to be a good twist. What a twist! Anyhow, sorry, uh, I, I derailed us, but uh, there are some movies that don't need sequels, and you feel that Finding Nemo was. Finding Nemo is one, one of them. them. Monsters Incorporated was one of them. Comes down to it, Cars is one of them, but they're going to keep making them because they sell lots of toys. And the little kids are like, oh, Lightning McQueen, I need to buy a new Lightning McQueen, because my other Lightning McQueen is a plain red one, and this one is the blue one. Shining McQueen. Yeah, it's what um, I I liked think. Monsters Inc. I like point five. I liked Monsters University as well, but again, just because they did a good job doesn't mean it needed a sequel. I mean, sometimes that happens. Very rarely does it work that way. Almost always is the unwanted sequel uh, terrible. But Pixar, you know, I mean, we we've got a whole marathon of episodes about Pixar and their awesome storytelling. So you should go listen to that. You can't. Oh, sorry, folks. Yeah, that's right. Uh, but anyways, they... feel, feel free to donate to the show, guys, and, and say, hey, I'm donating so I can hear all those episodes, and I'll think about it. <laughs> He'll be obligated. He'll actually do it. But yeah, you know, they do their due diligence as far as the storytelling goes. However, I mean, the, the plot to this movie... Sounded to me like basically, hey, this is the hangover part two. They all got hung over and forgot again. But this time, they forgot about Dory and had to go find her stuff instead. There's a million fish in the ocean and she's just looking for one. Oh, wow. You used my words against it's, me, spirit. <laughs> it's not a good premise it's just like hey look we're doing the same thing but now it's dory's turn which didn't excite me didn't make me want to go and see it i don't know and I, I was even i had my dukes up to the point where it was just like i don't care if it's good i don't care if it's got a 93 finding nemo had a 95 <laughs> did it really only have a 95 i don't know what it had. oh I just f made that, who, up. that five percent guy <laughs> but that's the way I was. I was just like, I don't care. It's not good enough. It can't, you know, I, I don't know why I was so much that way. But, you know, I'm I, like, I never saw the Matrix sequels because I was just like, no, that doesn't need to be a sequel. It's over. And I refuse to watch them. And in that case, I've been told that that was a wise choice. Okay. But in Pixar's defense, while I was watching this movie, I could tell they were really really trying almost desperately so you could see them saying okay that's not enough guys that's not enough okay we've got an a a b c we need 10 more things b b 10 more reasons for this movie to exist please please guys wait we hey, got it in there. i could feel their desperation there were a couple parts where i was just like wow they worked really really hard on this um yeah why it, it felt so much more complicated and 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 more what's that what, what's is it desperate is that the word i was looking for where well, it's that's just, the word you use. There's a simplicity <laughs> to Finding Nemo that, not to say that it's a simple movie, but it's just like so easily relatable and effortless in its, you know, a, a guy makes a mistake and he loses his kid and can he change? Can he learn? Can he find the boy? Can he get a second chance? And uh, th there was that going on here. But, like, seven other things going on at the same time. And uh, I wonder if there wasn't a meeting over at Pixar where they said, okay, so we he, we came up with our story, and it's good, but I think we can put a lot more stuff in here, guys. I, I'm going to get three ideas from every single person sitting at this desk, 
and we're going to incorporate them all. And somebody's like, okay, uh, Sigourney Weaver. Okay, what, what about Sigourney Weaver? <laughs> yes, I, I like Sigourney Weaver. She's in her underwear at the end of Alien. What, what about Sigourney Weaver? That's, that's, I don't know, just, I want Sigourney Weaver. Okay. Um, plankton. Like, Echolocation. Uh, yes. It's like, what if there was a the nearsighted greatest. whale, a whale that kept bumping into things? Okay, you got anything more? No, no, that's, that's my contribution. Okay, what do you have? And they put it all in there. It's just like, okay, the gang's all here, and everybody at the table octopus. has a say. And, Ed O'Neill. <laughs> oh, come on, Ed O'Neill, that's pretty pretty obvious, right? I mean, that's kind of on the I, nose. Could, couldn't we get, I don't know, somebody else? I didn't know it was Ed O'Neill to the end. I was I waiting. I was trying to figure out whose voice that was. and I, I didn't either, and I finally looked at the credits, and I was like, Ed O'Neill is a... Uh... I know who Ed O'Neill is. Why didn't I get? I should yeah, have recognized, I should have recognized it too. It's weird. Should have that jumped I didn't. at me right away, but he was so like grumbly when he talked that you didn't ever hear the higher register part of his voice that would give it away as being Ed O'Neill, being Al Bundy. Okay, so for for me, <sighs> the parts that worked the best were almost any time they flashed back to Dory as a little fish yeah baby and we had these flashbacks and for some reason it really struck me it was heartbreaking i don't know why i think the 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 parents struggling and trying to be patient and worrying about the kid and saying what what, what's going to happen what holy cow okay no 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 that's not what we said oh you're doing fine (laughs) and putting on a brave face or whatever i just like wow that i don't know that's speaking to me and uh there was other good stuff too but Again, there was a lot of stuff, <laughs> and I don't feel like all of the stuff worked as well as that. Yeah, that stuff did work well. It's funny because a little bit, but I, I had to get up really early this morning, and because of that, I was so tired. Like, on the way to meet Rich, I was driving there, and I swear, the fact that I'm alive to record this podcast is a minor miracle, because I was asleep a good portion of the drive uh, here. So when I got here, I was just like, you know what? I have got to drink a large caffeinated beverage if I'm going to stay awake and watch an entire movie and not even start recording this episode until midnight. So I did. Um, we went by at 7-Eleven. I got myself a big gulp of diet. Yes, diet. Mountain, no! Mountain Dew. So I drank that entire thing, and then on the way in, I went to the bathroom, and then we went in and sat down. And before the trailers, the awful, awful trailers were all over, I had to pee. And I thought, ah, oh, maybe, ah, oh, dang it, why did I watch all these stupid trailers? I could have gone and peed during them and been back before the movie started. But then that Piper thing came on. And I told you, go, go, go right now. Go at the very beginning. And- yeah, and I was like, ah, but if I go at the beginning, and it, the funny thing is, when I went and saw Finding Nemo in 2004, my daughter, who is 14 now. Was it really 2004? <laughs> 2004. My daughter was two. And, you know, she's at the age where going to a movie theater is not necessarily a good idea. So we went to see this, and I was really excited. I loved Monsters Incorporated, and now Pixar was, you know, and I'd love Toy Story, and I'd love Bug Life, and we I think we now owned all these DVDs. I was so excited. I was really becoming a Pixar fanboy. And so we're watching the movie, and we get to the part uh, where they go through the jellyfish field, and at this point my daughter had had enough. And she was losing it, and she started screaming and crying, and I had to pick her up. I was so irritated with my wife, too, because I knew that she was not becoming a Pixar fanboy. And to her, this was just another movie, but to me, it was just like, this is the greatest thing ever, and then I had to take this kid out. And uh, I went out just kind of to the side. You know, there was like, you know, the wall before you go up the stairs in the stadium seating. And I was just kind of standing there on the side and trying to get the kid to stop crying and still trying to see. But, you know, I missed a majority of that scene, and I was so irritated. And, yeah, when we walked in there and I had to pee so bad, 
I was just like, this is going to be just like playing. I'm going to have to get up and run out of here. I don't even have a kid with me, but there's no way I can hold this the entire movie. And you told me I should go right then, and I, but, uh, but I'll miss the beginning. You know, that's the worst thing, it seems. It's one of those things where if you're going to be late to a movie, I would rather not go than miss the beginning. So I'm like, no, i got to see this part. And yeah, the opening scene is Baby Dory. And in a second, I don't know who they got to voice Baby Dory, but best actor on the whole show, just in a second, you know, she she makes the, I don't know, the Olsen twins look like absolute hacks with the crap that they did in their TV They, they show. were absolute hacks. Although they at least had to act, act, you know, voice acting is a little easier than regular acting, but still, this kid was absolutely darling and then the little baby dory that they animated for her to voice just as darling it was uh, at the point that they got to the end of that opening scene i almost felt like that that, that, that was like the intro and in up where it's like the first 10 minutes if you miss that first 10 minutes you should shoot yourself because <laughs> you missed the entire best part of the show <laughs> um you know, you you might not be wrong on uh, definitely you're not wrong on up. Yeah, I I don't know of a man, woman, and child that doesn't love that opening of up. But yeah, maybe it was all downhill from. I don't know if it was all downhill, that. but all those scenes with Baby Dory were it it was endlessly cute. It's one of those things that they like all those stupid movies are trying for the Kevin Spacey is a cat movie and secret lives of pets and they all want to be really cute but they cannot they just don't have it in them but yet this one definitely had it well it's because none of those movies have heart they're all crass they're after making a buck and hey you know what's successful cuteness let's just put some cuteness in and some pratfalls and farting and when people burp green mist comes out okay yeah i love the green mist thing Fat lady fall down. That's why. That's what we'll call the next one. <laughs> yes, I smell the money now. So uh, you didn't get up and go during I that. I didn't scene. get up and pee, and I'm really glad that I didn't because I would have missed it, and I would have been. Uh, yeah, I mean, but they, right now I would be telling you, and I would feel so bad that I told you to go, and it would make this episode. <laughs> You'd yeah. be like, wait, what? I could be shouting and what? cursing your name. And then when I said, and you know, I, 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 I feel bad telling you this, but it was all downhill from there. You'd be <laughs> like, oh, you piece of crap. <laughs> Last episode, folks. Yeah, it was interesting. There was some really fun stuff with it. Uh, I love the Sigourney Weaver stuff. I don't know if you thought that was uh, funny as well, but they had just this, re they, they come up to the uh, aquarium and you can hear Sigourney Weaver, and she keeps telling, I'm Sigourney Weaver, over and over again on the show. Dory talking back with uh, Sigourney Weaver as she tries to get into the aquarium, I thought was a pretty good bit. I don't know, I liked it. I have to admit, like Monsters University, I liked it. I think, unlike Monsters University, this one actually had less heart to it. Um, you said that they tried to jam everything that they could think of in, and there was a lot of stuff. And I think it's just the nature of the beast when you've got a movie like Finding Nemo that you're trying to make a sequel to, and it's like, oh, well, they got to do all these crazy things. And it's like, oh, they're in an aquarium again. Uh, and, of course, there's a big aquarium. But they kept winding up in fish tanks. And Did you notice that none of the animals that would want to eat fish even showed any inclination toward that <laughs> except for like the one octopus that they ran from which was just a brand new version of that angler fish from the uh the first show i did notice that early on i was just like uh oh these guys are going to want to eat them oh they no they didn't want to they wanted to help them oh that's that's great uh oh but out of the frying pan guys into oh no they they want to help them too okay yeah. well at least there were a couple of a-hole fish that wouldn't help dory <laughs> but no, nobody wanted to eat her. <laughs> yeah, nobody wanted to eat her, and like the, all these things, otters and sea lions and all these kind of things that eat fish did not eat fish. And sea lions also just like to lay on rocks and not move at all. 
I don't know, seemed a little weird, that whole thing. I did like it, but yeah, that was kind of the thing that was missing, you know, in, in Finding Nemo, you had the father who had to learn to let go and to let his child grow up and to stop trying to control his life and dominate him and, and you know, make him do what he wants and and not let him feel in charge of himself and feel worthwhile and all those kind of things. He had to get over that. In this one, I don't, I don't know what the lesson was. Uh, there was maybe a lesson where, like, Marlon needed to not be a jerk. I but, guess, but I couldn't help but side with Marlon. It would be infuriating to live with somebody like Dory. Uh-huh. I mean, you know, we got to see so much of Dory in this that, of course, you know, you feel affection for and stuff. But uh, the, 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 the big solution of how you can get out of any problem is what would Dory do? And that felt like it came out of fucking nowhere. What would Dory do? What, did I see that on a license plate once? I, I'm trying to think. <laughs> WWDD. And I guess what I Dory would do is she would just keep swimming? I, what She would try a different way? She, she would, would speak whale. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know. I, she would have fun. This had the, the, the sequel curse that I and you... And anybody worth their salt has ever complained about where it has to be bigger and there has to be more stuff and all that. Whereas I feel like if they had simplified this movie a little bit and eliminated a few of those characters, I mean, there were so many delightful characters that most of them weren't delightful. Like there was a clam that had a, a pearl. I guess he was an oyster because he had a pearl inside him and he was just in the one scene. And I was like, oh, I guess... That's fine. It just, it, but there were twenty characters like that, and the the octopus was the only one where you're just like, oh, okay, this guy. Oh, I like this. Oh, this guy's good. He's got depth. He's got dimensions. And part of it was because we kept moving from situation to situation, place to place, and place. There, there was so much going on, and so many different locations and places that they went, and that, uh, you know, I feel like maybe they tried too hard. Or maybe it's not tried too hard, but they just felt like, oh, well, we have to one-up everything. I mean, we had the, the, the truck sequence yeah, at the see, end of the movie, you know, this say. huge action sequence. That's a, and that, it's fine, but but did we need it? I, I don't think so. That's the sequelitis thing. See, that makes me think of Toy Story 2 where the friggin' toys steal a truck to get to the airport and the toys are driving a truck. And then here we are. 17 years seven, later. Is it 17? Was it 99 that came out? 17 years later, and it's the exact damn same thing. Now we've got an octopus driving a truck. The octopus can't see, so there's something else up above that's telling him to do this, to do that. And and that's one of those things that just drives me crazy. It was, the, okay, dude, I'm sorry, but an octopus can't steal a truck. You're going too far. Um, it became a cartoon. Whereas I remember in the first movie where the the fish were able to swim in a circle in a bag and it made the bag roll so that they could escape. And I thought, a fish could actually do that if a fish were smart enough. Uh, but yeah, there was it, became, it was a cartoon in this one where it's like, yeah, well... And they went in the mop bucket and they survived. <laughs> <laughs> At least it was water. I don't know what kind of solution they put into that mop bucket, but uh, yeah, it just was one of those things. I still liked it, though. Yeah, I, I, I liked it, too. We've said nothing but negative, but I actually liked it. Well, but we've said nothing but negative, but the, 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 the baby Dory stuff was rad, was excellent, was Pixar at its best. But I don't know. There, there's this moment almost at the very end of the movie where Dory is on her own, and she's like, what am I going to do? Oh, shoot, I'm by myself. Oh, no, I'm going to forget. I'm, I'm worried. And then the movie just stops. And I, things where it's like, holy cow, what, what just happened, guys? And I'll, I'll bet that scene was only two and a half minutes long. But it felt like forever to me. And I, I think that they totally lost me at that point. <laughs> and we sat through the rest of the movie and I sat through the credits. Then there was like a little post-credit sequence. And the only thing that salvaged, that made me feel like, okay, hey, that was worth sitting through, was there was the, the moron sea lion. <laughs> <laughs> who wanted to be on the, the rock. And and that moron sea lion was out of some other animated film. <laughs> I mean, just the way he looked, yeah. the way he acted, 
He was out of a lesser animated film. But I still laughed. And the, the, the screen zooms in on him. It circles in. It irises in on this, this guy's dorky face. And I was just like, okay, that was funny. I became what I most despised. I'm, I'm sure you and that lady up at the top were laughing together. Right, right. That's what I mean. Yeah, I despised her, and then at the end, I joined her. Join us. But I think we've hit one of those moments where I liked it way less than you did. Well, you're the bastard that made me come to it in the first place. I am indeed, and you know why you liked it way less than I did? Because I was already going in with the lowered expectations. Well, at the end of the movie, during the credits, you said, so if this won Best Animated Film, and I was like, whoa, 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 you think this is going to win Best Animated Film? It just, it it, can't, it shocked me. I was like, what? I guess that's how little I liked it. <laughs> but then uh, both of our families own Zootopia, and every single time that's on, I'm like, holy cow, this is better than the last four times I watched this. So, you know, I guess my... Except for when Giselle comes oh, up. Oh, gosh. I just want to die. Oh, and he sees... <laughs> give me back the city this I love. Not the city that I love. I am Bono, except for a woman. Yeah. Look at the homosexual tigers. <laughs> I don't know why she has this accent. Yeah. Um. Okay, so sorry. Yes, we have spoken. I have spoken mostly negative. Give me a couple things that you really like. Wow, well, sorry. One more bad thing. <laughs> Thomas Newman, <laughs> at one point when I was young was this brilliant up-and-coming composer. And I think you ke- uh, oh, were, were a big pusher of I, Thomas Newman. I and you say, you know what Thomas else Thomas Newman. Newman has done? You will dig it. And I'm like, I really? He did him. that too? Because to me, he was the Shawshank guy and the Finding yeah. Nemo guy. And yeah, no Thomas Newman at all in this film. It, it, it was a totally different guy with the same name. Yeah, except for when he would recycle exactly once stuff from... Once that happened, he played the, the Nemo egg... Yeah, he played the Nemo egg once. He played uh, the the doom, do 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 when they uh, when the boat flew over, and the part where they were recapping. And here's where he she meets Marlin. And okay, one year later, but yeah, it was missing. But you know, not every composer is going to be great every time, and. Uh, a lot of composers, you know, only hit it right once. So he's done better than than many. I don't know that Giacchino guy may do great every time. He does pretty darn good too. Uh, he may be the next uh, the, the replacement for John Williams someday. I think so. Uh, okay, so sorry, I I had to complain one last time about the the rotten score. But you uh, can go ahead and, and, and tell me why you liked it and tell me, remind me of things that I did like. Oh, I just wanted to finish the story. I asked you if this wins best picture, and this was a question as though, you know, not that this really would, but that if this won best picture, would all the people on the credits, could they call themselves Oscar award winning uh, filmmakers? And you said no, which made me feel sad because I had a friend who worked at Pixar and he worked on The Incredibles, and The Incredibles won Best Picture. And so I thought, oh, yeah, this guy's an Oscar award winner, sort of. But no, I guess not. But he worked on an Oscar award. He's just award. an effing drone. Okay, well, that's true, but he he probably has worked on several Oscar winners. See, I don't know. I've never seen his name in the credits again. I haven't paid close attention, but, I mean, Incredibles was like 2005. Not a lot of people stay working at the same place for 10 years, so I doubt that he's still there. He's probably doing, like, Ice Age 4 or The Secret Lives of Pets or... Storks. Don't forget Storks. One of those shows. Yeah, he probably did Norm of the North. Ooh. He's probably long gone, but probably making more money. Yeah, I would imagine. I I guess he might actually get to go home and see his family. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, and yeah. be able be able to afford a house close enough to his work that uh, the few times that he does get to go home and see his family, he can actually get there before he has to go to bed. Uh, was this the same guy that didn't want to work on anything adult, so he went into animation, and his first assignment was, now you get to animate Beowulf's dong. <laughs> there you no, go, kid. You else. made it slap, slap on the 
I love else. that story. That, that, that one flopping of the best wieners, stories. flopping wieners, flopping wieners. Uh, one of the best <laughs> stories you've ever told was that story. Yeah. And so we quit and went and got on some movie about Santa Claus that went belly up. And then he, like, was a janitor. Still doing better than me, folks. Okay, well, sorry. Um, uh, let me steer the, 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 the story back to Marlon and Nemo who had secondary roles in this film. But how how was it to see those characters again? Dan? I didn't like them. I wanted to kick Nemo a little ass because he was like a little bitchy, like whiny. You said that she should go, Dad. Gosh, you made her leave. It's all your fault, Dad. I miss Dory. Ugh, I'm texting here. Don't bother me. Dory, I don't want to be around you. You're an ass. That's the way it felt like, every time he came up. Here and there, that happens. Like, for example, I've been listening to this Orson Scott Card audiobook series of Pathfinder. And the first book, Pathfinder, you got the two main characters, Rig and Umbo. And they're kind of like buds. And they, like, get along great. But then all of a sudden, book two, Umbo becomes a complete dick. And never stops being a dick for the rest of the time. And every time he says anything i just want to fucking stab him in the throat with something really sharp but also serrated so well he yeah he becomes super antagonistic to the main character and jealous of everything and threatened by everything that he, the guy can and do good anything that anyone that was says not, is a backhanded you know you know it's a criticism of if him. it's a compliment it's a backhanded compliment if it's not it's a criticism it's and it's so unbelievably annoying but it wasn't like that in the first book the first book it wasn't they were like buddy buddies and oh, there wasn't wow. any problem then all of a sudden freaking right turn uh, maybe there was a small amount of it but i don't think so i didn't see it uh, i don't remember it anyways i mean i listened to it and then not too long after listened to the second book and i was just like oh my gosh i'm tired of this i believe you because yeah, i don't listen anymore i do remember that and i i probably yelled many times at the uh the audiobook but it had been three or four years, I guess, since I had read the first book. And so I, I couldn't remember if this guy was an A.A. Yeah. in the beginning. So anyways, that's what it felt like with uh, Nemo and Marlon. I was just like, oh, gosh, it's like Umbo again. I, I swear that I'm not in my car listening to that book right now. But it feels like it every time they come on. And that seems to happen a lot. In film, you just get, you know, if, if there's a child and a, and a parent, the child is always like this overly critical little piece of shit. Well, but isn't that because that's what children are now? I don't know. My kids aren't that way. They aren't oh, see, I thought you were totally crap. internalizing it. And that's why you were saying, I'm texting, because that certainly <laughs> didn't happen in the movie. I thought that was, you're quoting your own children. I wasn't quoting my children, but the stereotypical child, basically, is what I was uh, going for with that, but. Yeah, I was irritated with them most of the time. The two whales were fun, I thought. And yeah, I mean, I, I really liked the octopus. He, he was enjoyable. And those are basically the, the main, the new characters. I mean, the other ones were just little characters. The weird duck bird thing. You may know what kind of bird that is. I, I certainly don't. I don't um, either. Yeah, I think her name was Becky. Yeah, Becky was... She was forget. I mean, she was just a weird bird. It was just like the moron seal that didn't say anything but looked weird, and uh... <laughs> it sure did. <laughs> oh my god! I, I wouldn't be surprised if that moron seal was designed by the designer of Arlo in the Good Dinosaur. <laughs> and you're just like, what? You do realize that your characters don't look anything like the characters around them, right? You do realize that you work for Pixar, right? We we hired you away from that other company. You're not supposed to still make minions. <laughs> I was just going to say, they shouldn't be attacking Gru and his step-nephews or whatever the... I don't know. Despicable me. I think he had adopted girls, okay. actually. <laughs> goyles. These are my goyles. Yeah, the go is. girl thing is, is absolute crass bullshit attempt to be cute and doesn't work. <laughs> but, you know, the housewife up in the... 18th row does cackle <laughs> when she sees them. Okay, so All yeah. All this unbelievable negative stuff. I liked the movie. I enjoyed it. 
I was I trying to steer it back there. to something positive because it's like, well, it was nice to see Marlon and Nemo again. I sat there needing to piss so bad. So bad. And I just held it. I kept holding it. And I held it the entire time. Two hours of the movie. And by the time I was done, I was probably near that level of like where you go into the shock because you got like, you know, you drank too much fluids and then you didn't pee and you're getting that like water into your blood or whatever it is that kills you. I was right on the verge of that but i did that because i mean the movie was good enough that i wanted to see it i was like i don't want to walk away because there's interesting stuff and there's i mean there might be another baby dory scene or whatever i don't want to go and miss that and so i stuck with it i mean it was worth that much and yeah i i I think that maybe you know i mean we talked about the trailer for this show you're watching it and then all of a sudden the Nemo egg music comes on and you were like, yeah, you just hear that music. And you're like, oh, OK, right. Oh, OK. I'm OK, in. I'll go see. That. I'm in. Yeah, I'm I'm there. All I needed was to hear that. And I'm in. And I wasn't that way. I was just like, yeah, I like music, but we don't need a sequel to this. And so I went in. Yeah, the lowered expectations. And I think the you didn't have low enough. And maybe the 93 on Rotten Tomatoes. 94. Got you inspired to think, oh, yeah, this is going to be really good. I don't know what, but uh, I think that might be part of our different reactions. Zootopia was better. I'll give you that, most definitely. I just saw Zootopia again last weekend. And what did you think of the eight times that you hear, try everything? Oh, my gosh. I was singing that afterwards, and my kids got so pissed. Good. <laughs> like, Shut up. I was like, try everything. Good. And they were just like, oh, Dad, okay, I'm going to bed. I know, it's only five, I don't care. Um, yeah, well, I mean, some of my criticisms are a backhanded compliment. That they tried too hard. There was too much stuff going on in the movie. There was, you know, so much. It was so big. But at the same time, you know what I'm saying. That sometimes simpler is better and, and just... Give us a... I complained that way about X-Men. That would have been a much better movie with fewer characters and fewer action set pieces and just more stuff going on with the characters that we did have. And uh, Yeah. In the X-Men world, man, I just... How could anyone still be happy with X-Men at this point? Like, with mutants. Because, like, seriously, the mutants have basically, like, destroyed the Earth, like, 15 times over. Every movie, they do something unbelievably horrific. And then they're like, and now everybody likes mutants. They like them even more than ever. Sure, they ripped the Golden Gate Bridge right out of the ocean and dropped it on top of Alcatraz. But And a whole bunch of cars fell off into the water and all those people died. But now we respect mutants because they're nice. And, uh, yeah. So, sure, Magneto destroyed cities all across the entire world. But now we're not mad at him anymore because in the end, he turned and fought against Apocalypse for a little bit. Sorry, that was a tangent. You were saying something about the X-Men. Oh, I was just I totally... saying that there, there was so much going on. Oh, okay. that, that was so a criticism. And, Too much. And, and right. I, I just I, I think that that's probably my chief criticism. Yeah, I, I I would have liked them to pair things back and just have it be a little bit of a personal story. Like, you know, Dory trying to find her parents, that's something that all of us can relate to. And it was fine. But yeah, I, I really wanted to feel more with the the octopus and and w- and then, you know, when she gets to see her family again, it's like, oh, uh, I should be feeling a little more than I am right now. And, and I... I don't know. Maybe there were people sniffling all around us in the theater, but there just... it was kind of a neat little image that they put because you know they made this whole thing about where they stacked all these shells all up in a line, and Dory could just find you know baby Dory could just find the shells, and she could find her way home. And then yeah, when they when she finds them out there, there's this little place where supposedly they live, and there's just lines of shells in every direction for for Dory to follow back to this house and find her parents it made me think of this story that i don't know chicken soup from the, for the soul or one of those kind of places where i've heard it 
where there's like this guy who's like the prodigal son that goes off and I don't know, he, he drinks and Ooh, he drank. parties and he sleeps with the pigs at the end and all that kind of stuff. And then he's coming home and he's like, oh, I'm coming home. I've been a bad boy and I know that uh, you guys shouldn't accept me, but if you uh, still want me to, be, you know, if you still accept me, then tie a yellow ribbon around the old oak tree and I'll see it from the train as I pull into the station and I'll get off the train, but if I don't see it, then I'll know that you don't want me to come. And then when he pulls in on the train, there's yellow ribbons everywhere. There's a hundred of them in the oak tree, and they're on every post and everywhere. I don't know why, but that made, totally made me think of that. The, the shells going, you know, a thousand different lines of shells leading to this place to try and get Dory. They obviously uh, still loved her. Although, why wouldn't they? I don't know. Um... But they still believed that she was out there and still, you know, thought that she would come home someday. And uh, I thought that was cool. I mean, I, I agree with you. I wasn't feeling the moment as much as I should have or as much as I, they, I think probably wanted me to. But why? How come it didn't? Because, yeah, I cried at the very beginning with little baby Dory saying, I have short term memory. You know what I mean? Mm hmm. I, something about the innocence of that baby, Dory, it's like, oh my gosh, it opened up my heart. And then, yeah, when she runs into all the other purple tangs and they say, oh, I'm sorry, your parents are gone. They're dead. I should have been crying, but I, I didn't. I, I was like, oh, okay. And then she finds them and there's this reunion and, oh gosh, Dory says something like, I'm so sorry, it was my fault. And that, I, I, oh, I wanted to cry. And then I didn't, and I don't... Yeah, I was actually going to complain about that. It, that seems like one of those things that they'll do. Like, what was her fault? She got into the pipe by accident? What was the, the thing that she should feel so guilty about? I lost to them? You know, yeah, I think he had an accident, got swept away by the current, and went down the pipe. I mean, that's, that's like, I don't know. Somebody who was walking along and then an avalanche hit them and took them away. And they're like, I'm sorry, it was my fault. I I didn't stay with you. I should have stayed with you. And it's like, no, you got carried away by a damned avalanche. There was no way for you to stay with. What, how how do you feel guilty about that? I mean, seriously, are you mentally uh, ill? And in Dory's case, yes, yeah, she's got short-term memory loss. So I don't know if that counts as mentally ill, though. would be frustrating, but... Anyways, that's just one of those kind of, usually Pixar, you know, they talk about that in their whole story rules. Spoiler alert. <laughs> that, you know, you can't just go with the first option. You can't just, you know, pick that thing and, and go with it. And that felt like one of those kind of things where it's just like, this is not a, this doesn't make sense. It's not a good reason. This is, no, the... How how could she feel guilty about that? And why? That doesn't make any sense at all. I'm sorry. I'm confused. Um, had she actually done something bad? Uh, I don't know. Maybe it was because she got into the undertow. And the, the rule was undertow, undertow, let's go. Wait. Undertow, undertow. <laughs> heck no. <laughs> Maybe that's why she felt so guilty, because she broke the heck no rule. Well, if so, they should have pounded us over the head with that at least two or three more times. Yeah. So that we would understand. It's like, okay, baby Dory, there's only one rule, and it's stay away from the undertow. What's the one rule? Yes. There is one rule. Okay, baby Dory, what is that one rule? There's just one. Yes. What is the one rule? I don't know. It's on third. <laughs> yeah, it would have been better. If that's what they meant as the deal, then it would have been a lot better had they uh, pushed that. They didn't. Oh, one one more thing. that I mean, it goes along with the Sandpiper short, although the Sandpiper short was short? too too much. They really, really went out of their way to make this visually beautiful and super deep with all sorts of textures and all that stuff 
Um, but again, it's like, I, I, I don't know that they had to. That, that You know, there's one scene where there's like 800,000 fish on screen at the same time. And I'm like, you know, we would have been fine with 300,000 in that one <laughs> shot, guys. But it was right. pretty. You see it come up and you go, ooh, pretty. It's kind of like that scene that I've mentioned, I'm sure, at least once before on the show, but the scene from Tangled when they release all of those Chinese lanterns up into the sky and they're flying everywhere and then they sing the song uh, and everything. And, man, that's a just beautiful bit of film. Sometimes, I mean, it shoot, it could win you awards. Like Lawrence of Arabia, half of the reason it was Best Picture is because it was sweeping and epic and majestic and widescreen, 70 millimeter. Um, so, you know, there's something to be said for that, but I don't know. Sometimes I, I would think they might be able to save themselves some money. Just, you know, I don't know, if they had Render Man do less rendering or something, <laughs> they might be able to just give you, you know, yeah, like only 300000 instead of 800000 and they'd save a million dollars. Well, like, okay, the scene... overtime and Render Man fees. The scene where all the kids are wanting to touch in the, 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 the fondling pool, as I call it, there were like 80 different hands that jotted down and tried to get them. And it's like, well, what about 20, guys? What, what, <laughs> what if we cut a minute from this and just, you know, there, there were fewer hands. I like the creepy worms that come go yeah, back. The... And they're out. I'm circumcised. Wait, wait, what? What did you say? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what, what did that little guy say? <laughs> I don't know. Anyhow, I, I, I'm sorry. I, I, that has become my philosophy of late. Is sometimes simpler is better. And, and would you say less is more? Yeah, a lot of times. Weren't um, you the guy who like once said that that was like the stupidest platitude, and you wanted to like stab that person or something like that? Because you say things like kind of hyperbolic things like that. Oh no, relatively no, I, often. I do want to stab a lot things. of people. Yes. Like, uh, you know, the person who came up with the show, Don't Tell, uh, saying for writing, you you really want to hurt whoever that person was. Right, but that's, that's it, You're my like own Dory fault. when she's sleeping. You know, she might be stabbing my wallet. <laughs> Instead, you're like, oh, stab that guy with the show, Don't Tell thing. <laughs> stab, stab, stab. <laughs> Pretty weird. If you ever catch him asleep, it's kind of, kind of creepy. Just hope you're not the guy that came up with that, is all I'm saying. Oh, hey, did you see the two, the, the, the lesbian couple, of the human lesbian couple in the in the water park? I guess not. There was a lesbian couple and in the water was, park? There was, and I, I was just like, oh, there it is. Okay. That I was... did hear something about that. Oh, really? Had people, other people noticed it? Interesting. Some, some, somebody mentioned something about it. I, I actually saw like a blog post that was linked on Facebook or something like that. Like, why this isn't good enough. Uh, Fuck I, 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 and I remember in the first movie, you and I saw it, and your family saw it, and everybody on Earth saw it. But you know, it's there's like, one million people on Earth, and he's looking for one who hasn't seen Finding Nemo. But uh, yeah, the, it's like okay. So did Marlon and Dory? Uh, do they are they kind of a couple? Is that is that or, or is Dory a lesbian in this cartoon as well? Maybe I shouldn't say any of that stuff, but. But I, I, I wondered during this movie, it's like, well, are, are Marlon and Dory more than friends? Are they just friends? Do you guys just don't want to address that because of things, reasons? I, I, I... They didn't want to have an interracial couple. Ah, there you go. <laughs> Purple tang and a clownfish. Ooh, what are blue wore... tangs? Blue tang. Thank you, guys. <laughs> i still thinking of the. The little worm creatures that said grape. Well, it was grape, right? That they were saying. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Now, uh, do you want me to cut out the whole lesbian couple thing? Because I was just an aside to you because I saw it. And I was like, oh, that was interesting. I didn't... And it was on screen for two seconds. Right. And it was not drawing attention to itself or whatever. But I was just like, was that, was that there for her? Is that, was that what that was? 
Because I, I fully feel like that was there for her. Yeah, you think so? I didn't um, even notice it. I mean, all the people that were there, there was a billion strollers and people. I, don't, I didn't notice any people, to tell you the truth. Okay, so so what should I do about the uh, Marlin and 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 and, 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 Dory. and Dory a couple? Are they not? They're, they're just friends. They're sort of equals. They're, they're, but they're raising Nemo, right? Yeah, um, it is a little interesting. It does feel it's, it's like that relationship between Poe and sorry, the relationship between Finn and Ray. Not between Poe and Finn. It feels like there's some sort of a supposed to be romantic thing, but no, they're not really going there, so maybe not. Uh, this is Star Wars, so they really never treat those things, uh, like you think they would. Maybe, no. They do weird stuff like that sometimes in movies, like, you know, just, the, there was a Disney Three Musketeers movie in which Goofy, who is a dog, falls in love with Clarabelle Cow. And Scandal! Yeah, I mean, it's it's not like Daisy and Daffy... Sorry. <laughs> it's not like Daisy and Donald Duck. It's not like Mickey and Minnie Mouse. This is cow and dog, so I don't... You know, it's just... They'll do things like that sometimes, and you know, on on uh, some of the cartoons too. Like we have uh, Tailspin and Ducktales, and and some of those. And my kid watches them all the time uh, on the little screen in the van. Keeps them occupied, and they're kind of short, so he can see a lot more of an episode in the time that we're out driving. And yeah, they do all sorts of weird interracial <laughs> couples. <laughs> Or interspecies couples where they have, yeah, it's a hippo and a stork. And they're the husband and wife. Okay, and... well, that's just ridiculous, folks. <laughs> I mean, a line has to be drawn somewhere, and it's hippo and stork. <laughs> so, you know, they could be a couple. It could be that Dory and, and uh, Marlon are supposed to be a couple. I think they didn't go there in the first one because at the start, Marlon's wife dies. And so, and you they know, felt that would cheapen it if it's found one of those one. too soon kind of things or something, you know. But maybe in this one, it's not too soon anymore, and it's time for him to move on. Maybe you should start dating again, Marlon. Maybe they didn't go there. But there yeah, there was didn't. no romance at all um, that I can remember. And not every movie has to have romance. I'm not a again the house frau that was sitting up on the 14th row. I feel like I shouldn't have brought the conversation well, to that. Well, you can cut corner. the entire thing off. I won't be sad. Anyways, uh, so yeah, overall, the movie was good. I swear it was. I never need to see it again. I I swear you. I want to see Finding it. Nemo again. But yeah, it wasn't amazing. And uh, do you do you feel like we we talked about it at the beginning? Ninety four. Yeah, tomatoes. that's that's impressive, guys. Ninety four. Too I, high. Those are critics giving it a 94. That's not the audience. Usually the critics and the audience are, you know, 20 points apart. And the audience is like, oh, yeah, 94. And the critics are like, eh, 74, more like. But, um, yeah, somebody I was talking with the other day was talking about Rotten Tomato score. And they were just like, yeah, you know, I looked at Rotten Tomatoes and this thing was in the 90s. And I've never seen a movie that was in the 90s that I didn't enjoy. Uh, and oh, interesting. I thought he was going in a totally different way. And uh, I avoid all movies that are in the 90s because I've never seen a movie in the 90s that I liked. And I, I, I was going to say maybe this is that, but I still enjoyed it. So I would be lying if I said that that was the case. So there you go. But yeah, I mean, go see it if you if you want. If you haven't, <laughs> if you haven't seen it, we probably spoiled a lot of stuff for you. I'm sorry. Uh Okay, but well, sorry, one more thing before we go. It was super uh, successful. Super, super oh, yeah. successful. Made a um, load of money. I mean, Disney has been on fire this yeah, year. Yeah, they've been knocking out of the park and uh, almost everything Yeah, except not, for not Alice, Alice in Wonderland Man. sequel and, and all that. And, and there will be other bombs to come, I'm sure. Oh, and we did see the trailer for um, Pete's Dragon. And even though that didn't speak to me, and I was like, oh, I got to see that. It didn't look like shit to me. I was just like, okay, yeah, Pete Stratton, good good for you guys. Go do your thing. 
I don't get it myself. Pete's Dragon was a movie for babies. Okay, considering we were babies when and Pete's Dragon was. And not for, like, I don't know, like, 10-year-old kids. They'd be like, oh, fuck, Pete's Dragon. No, I'm not going to go see that. Fuck you, Mom. I'm going to smoke some cigarettes with the boys. This that's, this is true. That's what they did in the 70s. But this one is much more... This one is... It's going for action it's, movie crowd. Yeah, and, it's... It's not what I would have expected them to go for. It's way different. It's, uh, yeah, it's a totally different level of, and I don't see those kids being interested for some reason. Maybe it's just because I know what the original one was aimed for and I, I, in it's different. And I'm just like, oh yeah, but those kids don't know. They never saw the first one. So they, they've never even heard of Pete's Dragon. This is a totally new concept to them. I would say anybody so, under 30 has never heard of Pete's Dragon. So maybe I'm just being dumb and, you know, looking too much into it and uh, it's going to do just fine. But yeah, to me, that just seems like train wreck written all over it. It's going to be like Alice in one Alice Through the Looking Glass Part Two. Ah! Read. Ah! Okay, so the point I was trying to make is that Disney has done awesomely on on these these movies box office wise and i've no doubt that finding dory will make a billion dollars worldwide so if four years from now they announce finding marlin yeah. I, i'm just saying if if this happens what are your feelings on that i'm sick to my stomach already please don't i don't know i mean the I, I would be almost surprised if they didn't do it, to tell you the truth. Uh, it's funny because we talked about this way back in the day when Pixar was bought by Disney. And we're just like, wow, that's that's quite a move. But now John Lasseter is in charge of all this stuff. And, you know, he's going to be able to keep Pixar as good and as amazing as it ever was. And they'll be able to resist those damn Disney suits that are insisting on sequels. It's going to be so great. And then they were like, oh, yeah, so we have an announcement for Slate coming up. It's uh, There's going to be a sequel to this one and a sequel to this one and a sequel to this one and a sequel to this one. I think coming up next is Rata 2E. <laughs> well, we've got a Toy Story 4 that is in production right now. Yep, I'm sure we do. Um, and... And then, yeah, I guess there's a, a Cars 3 coming Cars down the 3. pike. Incredibles, Incredibles part due somewhere out there. Wally 2. Beneath a pale moonlight. Up to... Up yours. Up to here. I've had it up to here. Put that thing the back line. where it came from. So, <laughs> so right. help me. Put that thing back where it came from or so help me is what we need to say every time they announce another sequel. So I don't. It's frustrating because that's all they're doing. I mean, yeah, there there was still these holdovers that were from before. Uh, Good Dinosaur and Inside Out, and it seemed like they. I don't know. Something happened because Good Dinosaur was terrible. It did not get the. I mean, then this is one that they basically threw away and started over on. Uh, so. What was it like before? I don't know, but yeah, something went wrong there. And uh, I don't know. I, I think a lot of people loved Inside Out. I don't know why, but it just didn't do it for me. Like Me either, but else. yeah, people love that movie. And, and I'm willing to side with them, even though I didn't. I'm willing to say, yeah, oh no, it's, 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 it deserved to win Best Picture. It's, uh, it, it's solid, guys. I, I still love Brave. I think Brave was wonderful, and it's underrated. And every time I see, like, a sexy Merida. version of Merida, a little part of me dies. But, <laughs> you know, I understand that that's the price you pay for working with Disney. Is you, you know, like, okay, we're going to make a, a hot version of Merida. Um, yeah. And, I, yeah, I liked, uh, I liked Monsters University, and I liked Toy Story 3. So... I don't know. I'm just. It feels like, uh, yeah, the golden age is is well over, and the one that's in the golden age now is Disney, which sucked when when uh, Laster came in. 
He like came in in the middle of Meet the Robinsons. It's like Dougal, only not quite as good. <laughs> oh, my, oh, come and, on. You take that back, dude. Dougal is Lasseter what you get is like, for your kid if you don't love them. <laughs> John Lasseter's like, whoa, let's put the brakes on this and let's change this thing all around. And yeah. You're like, oh, wow, John Lasseter's, you know, he's he's, he's cleaning man. up this town. Man. And and the weird thing is Disney has turned into a maid. They're making one amazing show after the next. And we saw the trailer for Moana and you said it looks absolutely bad. It as... looks like shite, but I'm sure it's not. And yeah, the the thing is, you're sure it's not because you believe in Disney because they've been hitting it out of the park, not box office wise, like we're talking about with just this year, but with good movies. And uh, yeah, the the ad campaign for Zootopia was really weak too. So like, imagine the city where all the animals drive cars. I was like, really? That's no, that's a that's a DreamWorks movie, guys. And in fact, that's every. DreamWorks movies. Like, no, Disney presents Zootopia. But that sloth commercial was funny. Or right, but that was not the... the yeah, that was that was the trailer that was attached to Star Wars. Which, unfortunately, gave away that scene. And so when the scene happened in the movie, you're like, you know, that was really funny in the trailer. <laughs> it's okay. The rest of that movie is so good, it doesn't matter if we have one scene spoiled. Yeah, so that's always Try sad. Everything. It's always sad when that happens. But anyways, yeah, Disney's knocking out of the park, not Pixar anymore, and it makes me sad uh, because I was a Pixar fanboy that wanted to yell at his two-year-old daughter for crying during the movie, so I missed some of it. That's how over the top I was. Like, what a douche. <laughs> um, and now, yeah, it's gone. It's it's just something that's gone away. That I, I can't be the fanboy anymore. I, I can't. You know, I used to be like, huh, DreamWorks. No, that was a DreamWorks movie, not a Pixar movie. How could you be so stupid? And yeah, now it's just like, eh, there's not a gigantic separator anymore like there used to be. DreamWorks makes things like How to Train Your Dragon. Oh, yeah, which, that's really uh, good. Is, you know, it's up there. It was really, both of those were really good and... <sighs> I don't know. It frustrates me. It just makes me sad. It's like a little part of myself inside has died. But, you know, Moana's coming soon, so I guess we'll watch that and enjoy that and, and you know, geek out to that. Did you not think that, that was a bad trailer? Because I got the impression you're just like, what? Well, this is great. This is fine. I didn't think it was terrible like you did. I just thought it was average. That's all. Try everything. It was definitely not really terrible like many Pixar trailers have been. But, you know, it's one of those things. The worse the ad campaign, it seems like the better the movie. So maybe we're really in for something good. So um, my parting words for you, first of all, I've been Begankovich. And I've been Rich Outfield. Try everything. Find Dory within you. What would Dory do? When you're faced with a decision in life, like whether you should drink that beer or not, just think, what would Dory do? Well, you know, <laughs> beer causes short-term memory loss, so, so I think Dory, you should drink the beer. Dory probably does drink it. Okay, good. Well, now we know what Dory would do. I want to get that on a little bracelet and just wear it around everywhere I go. WWDD. Good night, folks. That Gets My Goat is produced under Cabrated Commons, half a juice and non-commercial, no deliveries, 3.0 license. But that will be our little secret. This isn't enough. Yeah, okay, it's not enough, but... I don't know. Everybody wants a a black president of the United States in 1950. Everybody wants some. I oh. want some, too. Oh, all right. Divers down, folks. Good guess. No, 1984, quite. folks. Also a good guess, but not quite. Van Halen self-titled. You're never going to get it.
We'll just say that now. Um, right now. <laughs> it's your tomorrow. Okay, so I have no idea. 